usually come to church, you wait until the message. But uh, <laughs> I want to get a message going right now. <laughs> How about that? Hallelujah. Um, you know, Christmas is about, it's really about uh, miracles. Can you tell never a miracle? Miracle. Um, we kind of forget that. And, uh, and we all only have Christmas once a year. But sometimes we really need a supernatural gift of God every day in our life. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah? Amen. Yes? Yes. Amen. Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> why is only one day a, a year? Right. So, um, so, so that's why I've been sharing this message with you. Make the miracle not one, but S of Christmas real in your life. Mm. And I feel this is really a message for every day that in your in my life. And the child was born, is born for you and me. So, um, in Jesus' birth, marked by angelic visitations, yeah, it's not just in the in the movie or in the theater or just in the fairy tale. It's real, angelic visitations and pro prophecies, yeah, dreams. Anybody dream dreams these days? Yeah, I, Zach showed me he, he built a powerful computer last night. I always dream about powerful computers and. Uh, because he showed me he can make 14 cents because he's doing what? The cryptic money, uh, all that wonderful thing. <laughs> and my regular sign, tell me never signs. Oh, wow, hey, how are you? Welcome. Uh, it's, it's not a church no more, we just sit down and we'll talk about things. Uh, so Bert, Christmas is, is about this, angelic visitation. Anybody get angelic visitations? Wow. You should expect that almost every day in your yeah. life. Amen? And how about prophecies and um, dreams? I had a dream yesterday about powerful computers. I shared with like, in a dream, I just go into the little CPUs and, you know, what is I7 or what is it? And I just feel my heart beat, like, pump, like, you know, my, 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 my blood vessel is going and everything. And do you have a dream? Do you have dreams, guys? Yes. Yeah. yes. Really? Yes. What kind of dreams? Uh, what kind of dreams? What, what do you dream about? Christmas Eve dinner? Reaching banquet? Out, reaching out to people. Reaching out to people. What, what, what's your dream? I, I think we forget about Christmas. It's about dreams. And we shared about that last week. Remember, Joseph had four dreams to make Christmas happen. Remember I shared about that? Yeah. Dreams. So uh, in, the, in the New Testament, it says, also Old Testament, it says about in these great days, the greatest days of all, who will be dreaming dreams? Who will be dreaming dreams? Old people or young people? Old people. Old people. <laughs> so those who are old people, raise your <laughs> So it's not, the Bible doesn't say young people dream dreams. It's us who lost our dreams. Seemingly, we still have a chance to dream about things. Dreaming. I, I'm a dreamer. I'm still a dreamer. Amen. Mm -hmm. I dream of this church. You see the fountain outside. I'm dreaming about next year. Summertime comes. We'll put young people, old people, all youth, young people in that pool, baptized in the water. Amen. Because they decide to follow Jesus. I have a dream. I have dreams. I dream of this place. We will fill with young and old people who are ready to do things for the Lord. And they will thrive in their marketplace. Not just by their own power, their own mind, but by the power of God. Amen. Amen. That's what I'm dreaming about. That a husband and wife will come together and say, well, well, we'll put down all these differences in our past. We're going to work on something together. We want to work with that oneness. That because that's a Christmas gift every day. You are a Christmas gift every day to in my life. Amen. Amen. Husband, if you can say that every morning to your wife. I, I don't want to try now. I know, like, Xiaowei, you are the Christmas gift to me every day. Amen. If, if you try that, aha. Uh -huh. And the uh, uh, wife, you say to her husband, you are the Christmas gift to me. <laughs> With, uh, it will change. I pray. We'll have a dream, all right? And, and angelic visitation is all this here. Zechariah, Mary, Shepherds, Joseph. And angelic visitations, it doesn't have to be supernatural, like the angels show up with wings. No. 
angelic invitation can be somebody knock on your door, bring something you need that night. Amen. Amen. It could be where is Irene and where is Brianna? <laughs> they are not here. Amen. Show up in a senior apartment without a being doing a ministry, doing something, but show up the front front door. Does that bless you? Yes. Ruth. Amen. Yes. Bless thirty five some senior in a senior apartment last uh, two weeks ago. Yes. Yeah. That's angelic visitations. And someone give you a call and say, Hi, how are you? And that's all we need to do. That's Christmas gift every day. And, and, and according to the laws of chance, it will require... Ben, how many billion errors? 200 billion. 200 billion errors. People populated with 4 billion people on each to come up with one person whose life could fulfill just... Hundred accurate prophecies. If you want your life have hundred prophecy happen to you accurately, how many earths filled with four four billion people each? <laughs> can 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 you comprehend this number? No. Can you comprehend this number? No. So don't think Christmas is a fairy tale. It's a historical fact. Eleven prophecy filled at the birth of Christ. Eleven. Tell number 11. 11. 11. Over his life, Scripture 300 that are filled through Jesus Christ's life. That was prophesied before him. That's a child born for you. It's not just happened that you are a Christian, you are here. God has something for you. And sometimes we ignore it. Sometimes we're just like, okay, I'll, what, what, you know, I this. But look at this probability. It's not just random. It's something. So 2018, if you are willing and I'm willing, we have got to change. Amen? Mm -hmm. All right. I look at Michelle. <laughs> Michelle, are you, are you there? <laughs> so there's something that Michelle, the whole family is sitting here. It's not just by chance. Amen? Can you tell your neighbor, it's not by chance? No. It's, by, it's by power of God. Try that. It's by power of God. Try that. Power of God. Amen? And I want to mention a couple of things. Supernatural timing. And when the set time has fully come, God sent His Son born of a woman, born under the law. Colossians 4, 4. There is a time for everything, the Bible says, and a season for every activity under the heavens. So God works in seasons. Tell me, God works in seasons. God works in seasons. If you are athlete, you are, if you are a businessman or woman, you know cycles. You know seasons. Anybody know that? Seasons, right? They are seasoned to do things. They are seasoned to rest. If you continue just do training for 24 hours and 12 months a year, what's going to happen? Your body going to what? Fall apart. All right, so there's a season for you to rest. Young people here, look at me. I start to understand how much pressure and stress you guys have in today's society. I didn't know that before. Yes, young people? You agree with me? Or you guys are actually very free and, and no, no, no pressure at all? Ben? Oh, that's false. That's false. What kind of pressure you guys have, young people? Zach? Zach has pressure from his dad, I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what kind of pressure you have, like, out there? Come on, guys. This season. So, so today, I have this message to share with you. Um, I, I feel there are four things I want to share. And I'm seriously pointing these things out for you. I don't want you to come here. This is a church as usual. It's a routine. It's a moment. It goes through emotions. Because 2018, it's a set time for something that takes place here in this church, here in Princeton, here in this area, here in the East Coast, here in the United States, and here around the globe. God is doing something. I want you to know that timing. I want you to know as a young man and woman, as an old man and woman, um, we have to know the time, the set time. We have to realize the season. Otherwise, the season may just pass and we are still like, what's going on? <laughs> and this, as a season, that's, it's upon us right now. And, and in Matthew 16, 3, Jesus said very clearly, He replied to, this, to, to the religious people of that era, said, 
When evening comes, you said it will be fair weather for the sky is red. And look at the stock market price. And look at the, what's going on in the government. You look at the protesters out there. You look at all the chaos around the world. Look at the, the shootings. Look at all these things even taking place. You know there's something going. Today it will be stormy. The sky is red and overcast. But Jesus continued to say, you know how to in, in, interpret the uh, apparent appearances of the sky. But you cannot make sense. Make sense of the signs of the time. So I want to show you some of the things, the transportation system. If you look at when Jesus was born, it was a time. It's very special. The transportation system of the Roman Empire had paved the way for the message of the gospel to be carried to millions. That was two Sundays ago. So Jesus was born in a set time. Tell me never again, set time. Set time. <laughs> How about you? Do you think your eye were born in a set time as well? Oh, if you can't answer me this, I look at my mother-in-law. She was born in the north, uh, north, north, northeastern part of, 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 of China. And, and, uh, and, 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 and she was, oh, really, when she was born, it was totally a chaos in China. Is it, was any purpose for a little girl, Mulan, right? Remember Mulan? <laughs> Movie? Mulan. Mulan, Mulan. And, and she was born there, and there was a purpose for that, amen? Who is the youngest person in this room? Is it room? Zach? Huh? They was born in a very stormy, snowy <laughs> Albany. There was a purpose for it, amen? When you were born in that family, there was a purpose for you. Don't just blame your family. Oh, why am I why am I in this family? Come on, guys. When you were born in that family, there was a purpose, a supernatural purpose for you to carry out, amen? Amen. Yeah. Okay, look at my, my mother-in-law. She says, Amen. And her mom had to think ways to escape the Russian soldiers. That's disturbing the residents around her home. So, so, so there's a purpose for that, amen? There's a purpose for that. So, so look at that's a Roman, the way, the, the way they paved the way. And when G Christ was born, this system, this network was totally ready, amen? That's why when Christ was born in that little town of Bethlehem and let him grow up there, gospel will have a ready way to go around the globe. Isn't that great? That was a sad time. How about you today? Were you born in a sad time? You look at the video. It's called Did You Know? And this network, what does, what does it remind you today? Come on, guys. You use that every day. Internet. Internet. So, so I want to play this video. I want you to br I want you to bring this network, this image from Christ's time to you right now. That if you are a parent, look at the internet and say, oh, internet is a bad thing. Well, no. Internet is neutral. <laughs> People don't talk about internet neutral. No, internet is neutral. <laughs> internet is a place that God can use to carry his gospel. Amen? How about technology? So I want you to change minds right now, like for 2018, young people, if you are going to the college or you are finish your college degree, don't think you just want to get a degree or you get a job. You are thinking something. I want you to look at the, this next video. I want you to pick up a couple of things and say, that's, that's a Christmas message to me. That thing that showing on the video we may not think it's a good thing but I want to take a look at in a different angle can God use this in this set time to carry out his good news to the world amen are you ready to, 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 to watch this one this one now anybody know this oh. Can you hear? A little bit here? No. Just 
Use the projector, but hold the laptop up so it doesn't disconnect. Okay. Don't you watch this? I want to pick up something from this video that resonates with your heart right now, alright? <coughs> And on this church, we can picture the future because for Christmas time. Really? I don't know. But that's future. Water? Anybody want to work on water? Mm. Ready to grow to 100 years old? Okay. No. No? I'll just go to heaven. Alright. <laughs> Depression will be the number two. Wow. They need to only work on that to fight for, fight, fight for that. Fight, fight that. Aha. Uh -huh. Alright. Here we go. Followed wow. by what? Spanish. Spanish Alright. Here we go. It's a set time. <laughs> Stop here. Um, um, anything resonant with your heart? Come on, give me something. Yeah, no? The, the world is changing. The world is changing. What else? We have to keep up with it. Thank you, Ruth. That's our, our youngest lady in the room. Amen. <laughs> what else? What, what, what resonates with your, your heart, your spirit? Come on, guys. We can be super spiritual. This is taking place right now. Anything? And Christ was born in a time that was totally, the whole world was changing because of the Roman Empire and all the things happening. And Jesus Christ was born there. How about anything hit your heart right now? No, nothing? Or you don't believe it or what? Well, it's a little scary to know that everything's changing and we have to keep up with it, but it's a little scary. I know, a little scary. Anybody else? Give me a couple of things. Someone got, it's going to be the, not, not going to the church as usual. So I want your feedback. Because today, I'm expecting a breakthrough in the way we look at 2018 and ready for it. Joyce, you have anything? It's important to understand what's going on instead of just watching it happen and change in front of you. Because exactly. In order to spread the gospel, you have to speak in people's language. You have to know what they ha they are into. Amen. Anybody else? Ben. Um, I don't know. Like humanity is going to make a lot of progress in a lot of areas, but we're also going to like maybe endanger ourselves. So need to be careful. All right, so there are certain areas that probably like AI, they said um, AI is taking place of this world, not yet, but it, it could. Yeah, okay. Any, anybody else? Young people? Come on, guys. Joseph, you have anything? No? Thomas? I'm, I'm not in fear. I'm very interested. I'm very, so see, hopefully I can see that happen. Right, right. actually, we are going to be very happy, right? Because uh, everything will change. I hope it's on the good, good side. Yeah. So <laughs> our job is hopefully things happen on the good side. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's good. Anybody else? Come on. I really want to inspire you today that things aren't changing in the world, and Christmas was for that a changing Roman Empire. That empire is changing the world, and we are so. So that's why the angel said to Zechariah. Around that time, he said, "Fear not, 
the angel said to him, Don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife Elizabeth will have a son, but this is definitely it's, 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 uh, it's John the Baptist, but it's paved the way for, for Christmas story. And you will name him John. He will be your pride and joy. Tell your neighbor, pride and joy. Pride and joy. One more time, pride and joy. Pride and joy. And I, I'm looking at young people in this room. Come on, people who are young people. Look at them and say, pride and joy. Pride and joy. One more time, pride and joy. Pride and joy. I want look at you say, pride and joy. Pride and joy. Um, no, I, no, I don't think we, we say that enough. Okay, I want you to find a young man and woman in the room. Look into her and his eyes and say, Pride and joy. Come on. Pride and joy. Pride and joy. Next, pride and joy. You know that. Joseph, pride and joy. Um, you know, I, 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 was, I was trying something new from my company. And Joseph stayed in my house. I said, Joseph, this is what happened. Can you try it? Before I know it, he already did it. <laughs> A chat bot on the Facebook. I said, what? I thought it would take me forever. One day. That's, that, that's what today, that's how fast it is, amen? I talk in chat with my, some, somebody on the chat, uh, Facebook, a chat bot, <laughs> designed by, by, by Joseph. But the pride and joy go one step further. John and his parents knew the time. And they obeyed the angelic visitation and the word from the Lord. And they have a son called John who paved the way for the coming of Christ. And if young people, you are willing to say, Lord, I'm going to listen to you and obey you. I want to pave the way for you to come to my school, my town, my job, my career, my house. That's a, one step further into the pride and joy. Amen? You will be the pride and joy of your heavenly Father. And you can put down expectation from the worldly view. You, 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 know, you don't have to go to the top school to be thriving in life. Amen? Amen? You could go to the top school and be thriving as well. But that going to the school or not will not define you. Amen? Amen. It's what's coming from your inside. The pride and joy from your and my Heavenly Father coming to define who you are, who I am. Amen? That's a true pride and joy. And many people will be glad that he or she was born. That's another thing we say to young people. Luz, can you say to your young man right next to you, Thomas, and say, come on, say that. Many people will be glad that, Thomas, you were born. Come on, try that. Amen. I, no, okay, guys, I want, I want to say that to people around you. Say, many people will be glad that you were born. Come on, try that. <laughs> Say to your neighbor, many people will be happy and glad that you were born. Yes. Amen. Amen. I have a one pastor prophesied over me when I was a teenager. I was like, ah, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. See? That's usually the inner talking. I was like, ah, I don't think so. I don't think so. You know? Do you have that voice in you? Like, ah, I don't think so. That's from the devil. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And, and let me try that one more time. Can you put your hands on your heart and say, many people will be glad that I was born. Many people <laughs> At least my wife is happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, some of you guys don't take you on a road that you will never imagine. I'll talk about it in but, but don't despise the small beginning. Parents, don't just say internet is bad. Don't say that. Because Roman Empire, the world, people say is bad. Because it, it carried the, 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 the empire rule, you know, too much. But it actually, God can turn it around. Word for how to carry gospel so fast into the world. Amen? In the last than three or four hundred years, the Christianity just go all over the Europe and all over the world. Amen? That couldn't be done without this network. And God is paving that right now. If you, God put you to learning about deep data, data automation, go get it. Amen? Amen. If God called you to do artificial intelligence, 
God be the one with the Holy Spirit in you, your, your heart, but design, not the Holy Spirit for your AI. I don't say that. Don't go back and say, <laughs> Pastor Kongi yeah. said that. But you can design the artificial intelligence that has the humanity that's on the right side. Amen? And I want you to go out there. If you want to design a DNA can store the data of the world, go to design a good DNA. Amen. <laughs> I want you to go out there and with a kingdom view. And Christ was born for a kingdom, not for a church. Amen. Ooh, yeah. Christ was born for you and you are the church. You carry that into the world and you will be the pride and joy of Heavenly Father. It's not going to let one thing to decide your future. Your past cannot prophesy your future, amen? Your future is in that unique you, God created in Christ, restored by His precious blood. And He can for that reason, so you are able to stand on the right side and continue to go along with the right side because you have the power of the Holy Spirit, amen? amen. That's, that's the first part of the message. <laughs> oh, I need this. Many people would be glad I was born. Amen. Tell neighbor, do not be afraid. Come on. Do not. Do not Fear not. Come on. Fear not. Fear not the technology. Fear not what the, the media say. Fear not about all the things. You will look at it and say, God's going to send someone and will be using that to advance His good news. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Wow. That's the first part. And the second part around that time, 2,000 years ago, the empire's military conquest had prompted many to abandon their false gods as they wondered, why weren't we protected from our enemies? And look at history around 2,000 years ago when Christ was born. It was not, it was, it was not pretty. Roman soldiers killed so many people, you wouldn't believe it. They destroyed so many homes. There's so many violence and unfairness and things happen. Um, it, what does this remind you today? And the social injustice? Feminism move right now? I, I don't know. I, 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 but when I, and, and folks, this is a time, it's, it's very, very similar to when Christ was born. There, 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 there are powers that, that is spending its reach in a way, destroy families, things along their way. Those are the empire builders. They are building an empire. They have movements that destroy family. How do we counter this? How, as a Christian, what, what do we do? We are so hopeless. And, and, and they have the, the iron and the, the sword, they have the, the military strategy, they have everything. You know what I'm talking about. Not just Islamic extremists, I'm talking about people are taking territory in our mindset. They are playing mind games in the media. They are putting things in our young people's mind. And, and they are building what, according to their agenda, to conquer the world. Today's college campus and all that. I, Joyce is laughing. I, she just came out of campus. Congratulations. <laughs> you want to go back to campus. It's a very different place. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's worth it. It's worth it. It, it reminded me of this. and It, it was the first picture yeah. posted online from the shooting in Las Vegas, October 1st. Um, and uh, the reporter, his name is David Becker. And he wrote this, horror wash over me. Horror wash over me. And I, it, it, we look at that aftermath of that particular place. You wouldn't believe that's in the United States of America. Would you? Thank you. It was a war zone. But the difference is innocent people get killed. And... Are we fearful? And, and, folks, this is a sad time. This is a time, I know Christmas, you want to see, you don't want to see this, but I have to show this because Christmas is for every day. 
What is the Christmas for those people there who die? We can't answer all these questions. It's hard. Why God didn't protect them? Why God allowed this to happen? All these are the tough questions. I understand. And young people, if you get turned away from God because you cannot answer questions, uh, you are not alone. But the, the truth is, it's not after you know all the answers to the questions that your heart can be at peace. Mm -hmm. there, are, there, are, there are things in the world that reason is not a king. Reason cannot solve everything. There are places in the world that it will remain unanswered because the Bible says it's for you and me to search out the truth about it. Amen. It will take a people that put themselves into these events and to talk to the people, to serve them afterward, to know what happened. You can't just look at a picture and make comments and then you make your conclusion about God. Right. He's bigger than that. Mm -hmm. Unless you put yourself in that situation, you and I are not qualified to say anything about it. Amen? Mm -hmm. I want you to understand this about disasters. Never just watch a video because that's one out of a billion of what happened in that event. Amen? A lot of unknowns going in that event and in that spirit realm that we don't know. That's another thing this year happened in Texas, a church, a ch church shooting. That was one week after that a surface there. And the surface goes on. Amen? They will not stop church. And folks, this is a sad time for this country. Church people are slaughtered on a Sunday morning. So my mom called me and said, Son, put the security guard out there in your church. <laughs> I say, Mom, there's nobody can find Agape house. <laughs> <laughs> so don't worry about it. <laughs> they don't know we are even here. <laughs> we are safe. <laughs> uh, hey, that's who we are. <laughs> um, but, but late at night, did I think about this? Yes, I did. Because of you guys. I say, should we do something for safety? Folks, coming to 2018, be ready. Get ready for this. Um, it, it's a sad time. It was like Jesus' time. It, it, the church was persecuted. The church was, you know, and, and that's right. I want you to know if you feel spiritual attack, you feel your peer group give you some kind of look, come on, you are blessed. Because that's what those people who belong to the kingdom, that qualify you to be the kingdom people. Amen. And the, the angel said to Joseph, Fear not. Tell your neighbor, fear not. Fear, fear not. not. Joseph, in the Christmas story, is the head of the family, on the earthly family. He's supposed to be a protector. And an angel showed in his dream and said, Bring your son, and God's going to show you where to go, 2018, where not to go. Amen? Young people, the angel is going to show you. Holy Spirit will whisper in your eyes, go here or don't go there. So we have to le learn how to listen, amen? Where, which, which, which place you should join? Which party you should go to? Uh, well, I know we have uh, Austin here going to uh, Seattle, right? Seattle, yeah. Uh, we have Jamie now in Silicon Valley. I don't know where Ben going to be in college. <laughs> um, uh, Jonathan and but we go to a new place. The first thing you and I do is, Lord, Holy Spirit, Joseph now in Penn State. Oh, we have Ellie and Cassie both in uh, the tip of Long Island somewhere. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and when you go on the campus, go on the place, the first thing you ask is, Holy Spirit, lead me. If there are places, there are friends, you don't want me to go, tell me not to. Amen? Can we pray that pray? And let the Holy Spirit lead you and me. But the bottom line is, you, want pray, you pray that prayer not out of fear. You say what? Fear not. Tell never again. Fear not. Fear not. Yeah. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Folks, I think I'm using this symbolically. I think um, this is a time we are not going to be afraid. 
church is under God's protection. Amen? Amen. I can't explain that, what happened in Texas. But church goes up. When church is persecuted, that's where ch when church thrives. Amen? Amen. And, and, and I, I have no answer for you. Be honest as a pastor. But, but I have one thing for you is, God speak to Joseph using angels and angels in that. Fear not and know what is conceived in the church is from the Holy Spirit. Amen? Mm -hmm. What's in you in this church, in Agape House, in the church across the globe? It's not just an institution, it's not a building, it's not a structure, it's not a strategy, it's not what we do, it's not a program. What's conceived in the church is from the Holy Spirit that cannot be killed. Can kill my body, can kill the Holy Spirit. Right. That's a message for you. That's a number two. And, and I want you to know it's a privilege to be part of the church. It's not just family gathering, it's not just social. It's a privilege to be a part of the local church. You couldn't feel it, but when the church is persecuted, you start to understand what a privilege to be the church. That cannot be killed. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't don't in this country when we look at church, it's too much of a social event, it's too much of institution, it's too much of an organized game. But we have to come back to the root of the church. We know it's conceived in purely in the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. That's why we are privileged to be part of it. Don't just change churches because you like to, you don't like to. But you change church, you go to a church because the Holy Spirit leads you to. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, number three. Number three happened when Christ was born. Greek culture provides a universal language for communicating the gospel. Isn't that great? And the Greeks' worldview eroded, eroded many of them. He wrote in many of the deceptive foundations of false religion. Who can read this? Come on, anybody read Greek? Huh? I know it's Greek, I don't know what it says. <laughs> so when you say somebody speak Greek, that's exactly what happened right now. But it was the most common language 2,000 years ago. And the New Testament was partly written because of that. It was propagated the way, the speed that you've never seen it before. Christ was born in that set time, the language. What does it remind you of today? Um, the Oxford Dictionary word defined in its word of 2017 called Euskwek. Anybody know this word Euskwek? Oh, because you can't know. This, this, this word was coined in the 60s, hippies, by um, the uh, creative detect detective of one of the fashion magazines. She said, this is 60s, okay. Um, uh, as a cultural, political, social change arising from the actions or influence of young people. Use quick. Huh. That's 2017. Do you feel use quick coming? Everybody like, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Hey, young people, you are part of it. You, created, you are creating that quake right now. And I expect that. Okay? It was not like this before in my time when I was little. Yeah, Dong Yong. When we take picture, it's always facing the front, right? <laughs> now, when you take the picture, 80% is what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I never imagined I could do something like that. You see? That's use quick. <laughs> use is changing the way we do things right now, yeah? I talk to Joseph. I say Facebook. He said, no, no, no. We do Snapchat. What makes difference? What's the difference between Snapchat and Facebook chat? More fun. More fun. What what, what makes it so fun? Um, what? Pictures. Come on guys. Do you use Facebook chat? Um yeah. Very little. Not much of Snapchat. And I'm, who use Snapchat a lot? Come on. Thomas? No? Joseph? Well, yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 makes these two chat different? Come on. Come on, guys. One Snapchat's is like, more fun. it's like fleeting, it's like in the moment, is what I've heard. No, Snapchat is delete everything after how long? 
<laughs> See, that makes a big difference because nobody can hold you accountable what you said just a minute ago. Wow. Snapchat is like a. <laughs> you can just see what people are doing. It's just videos, and there's filters that put funny stuff on your face. All right. Hey, I I, I can't do Snapchat because I want to see what I said thirty years ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's just great, folks. Uh, it, it's coming. It's it's a different cultural stuff, and, uh, and, and, and and folks, I think spiritual realm. I'm expecting 2018. There will be a huge quake, spiritual. Amen. It is who you are, and you are going to change where you are. You say, Pastor Kong, you don't push me. No, no. I'm thinking you just be who you are, and get a little team of two or three. The Bible says two or three gather together. You will transform that place. Amen. In senior apartment on the campus. No, sorry, Ruth, I look at you. I'm not looking at you as a senior. I look at you as the youngest lady in this room. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Go change those ladies and old men. I'm sorry, young men in your senior apartment. Praise God. Pastor. Ben, you want to go to college. You want to bring a youth quake there. Pastor? Yes. The old people have grandchildren. They have young people in their lives. <laughs> Thank you. Ruth, Hallelujah. Praise God. All right, I want to fill the blank here. Global language monitor track the top trending word announced a word as a word of the year for global English. Which word? Come on, take a guess. Cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency, very close. Trump? No, no. Come on, guys. Guess. Cryptocurrency, currency, anybody. Austin, come on. It's not going to be Microsoft. Not Google anymore. Come on. What? Fill the blank. Not Donald Trump. Not Trump. What is it? The top trending word. They have a big data searching this out. Come on, take a guess. Thomas, what is it? No? He said no. last year it was selfie. Yeah? This year this was a selfie, yeah. This year, what is it? <laughs> no, let me show you. I think I, they don't struggle. True. You know, folks, you, you wouldn't think the word is true. Because the opposite to that is false news. The opposite of that is you can't trust anything on the media anymore. The bottom line is young people, old people, all of us start to think what is the truth. If I just search Google for the solution in life, am I safe anymore? Am I in a good hand? And, and this, is, this is a turning point, folks, 2018. Truth is a trending global English word. And, and this is our time to shine. Who get the most truth in the world? Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. He is the truth. Hey, the, the, the market is on our side. Hallelujah. And for young people and all of us and all the adults in the room, I want to share with you truth is on the horizon right now. Hallelujah. So the angel said to the, 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 the shepherds who are simple-minded people, fear not. And we share that last, last week. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good uh, tidings, uh, tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Truth was born. You and I have that truth in our heart. Um, so, um, you know, the shepherds were young people, but they were the first to know the, the good news of Christ Jesus. This made me to think about our shepherd boy back in the mission field. Pichu. Remember Pichu? Pichu was abandoned by his parents. Thomas, right? Pichu. How tall is Pichu? Not sure. Very short. And was abandoned by his parents. Nobody taking care of him. Picked up by the missionary. And now he's 16 or 16, 17. He's now working in the missionary's uh, cafeteria. 
He's learning English. Never get educated one day. Learning English. He laughs so hard. He look at you just laugh. He just doesn't have good teeth, but laugh. Um, he loves people. He now attend the ministry school in the summer. In a very stylish Tibetan <laughs> house. Right in the heart of the enemy zone in the uh, Tibetan Buddhist area. I'm thinking about Peter, Xizong, who come from another tribe, up in the 10,000 feet elevation, the mission field up there, his home. He used to be a hunter, also a shepherd boy. He pulled, pulled me out and said, Pastor, look at that end of that horizon, that, that mountain. That I used to be there alone, taking care of 50 sheep with one dog. I said, what did you do there? I did nothing, nothing. Now he is in the ministry, doing helping constructions, attending ministry school too. And, and folks, that's use quake. That's use quake. It's coming. And, and, and I'm thinking, Thomas, when Thomas came to Fire Rock, when he was sixth grade or seventh grade, he was shorter. He came into Wilson House. He all look like lost, like, oh, where is that place? And he attends some of our um, activities, and we drop fire rock. Now he's back. And now next year, when all the seniors are gone, Thomas, Karina, will be our senior in fire rock. They are taking the leadership. I, I look at Ben, and, and now playing the violin beautifully on Sunday. Without practicing, I'm sorry, you know my style, I don't practice. <laughs> Sounds like a, a basketball player. Practice? <laughs> you know who I talk to? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> and, and that spirit just come out. I look at Joyce and Irene. After eight years I spent, this church spent so much for the Fire Rock youth. Our first two Fire Rock people start to come back and serve. They open their house on Friday with a wonderful dog named <laughs> Leilani. Yeah. And, and they bought the best chicken wings. <laughs> that we can. They, out of their own pocket, they bought the best chicken wings for young people to go to the house and sit down. Amen. You know how much it blessed my heart? We have hundreds of youths coming out of programs. Now I start to see two coming back and serve the young people. Yes. That's use quick, amen? Mm -hmm. and who said we are lonely? Who said God has a plan for you and me? I, I can't name all of you. I, I, I have so, so much stories in my heart. And, 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 and I want you to know 2018, spiritually, use quick is coming. Tell neighbor, use quick is coming. Come on. Hallelujah. I, I want you and I to be part of it. I want you to just change your mind. Say, I want to be part of it. Amen. And um, I was in Taiwan traveling, sharing good news. And people always ask me, How are you, Coach K? You know my answer. 29. 29. Thank you. My <laughs> And next year, when you say how much you are, how old are you? 29. 29. And year after that, 29. Until I'm 92. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? Because if our heart is not getting old, we get wiser, but our mindset goes renewed day by day. Amen? Amen. Some of the young people, you get too old in your mindset. You get too old because you try to fight something. You try to fight for yourself. You have to do something using your old stress. It gets your mind old. Amen? You have to let the heart come out. Work with people, loving people. Relax and let trust God to lead you. Refreshing your mind on a daily basis. Do not conform to this world. Amen? So next year... We're going to start a school, uh, we call it uh, Agape 
School of Supernatural Ministry. So we are working with Basel, and uh, we already talked to their people. They bless us, they, they support us, and they give all, we are signing up to be part of their, they call branch school. So I want you to pray on this one. As a church, we are too small to take on this. But you know me, we are small, but we, oh, I'm sorry, not, I can't do that not anymore. Just give me one last chance, shall we? Is that okay? Can you say, we are small, but we are mighty. I try that. We are small, but we are mighty. That's why I'm driving a, a Mini Cooper right now. <laughs> <laughs> we are small, but we are mighty. But no more, shall I say, we can't say we are small. We are growing and we are mighty. Yes. Hallelujah. So I want to watch this. If God put this in your heart, not just for young people, I want you to prepare time, prepare resource, prepare your heart, and, and to do this next year. And every course and every teaching that will be taught by Basil staff and Bill Johnson and all the best anointing speaker, and we'll put this online, on the iPad, on the Android phone, on the computer. So you can, you can listen to their, their sharing, you have a student menu, but when we get together Sunday afternoon, we are going to have a blast from the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. I want you to carry that presence of that power to start the earthquake where you are. So I don't, I don't want you to come because Pastor Conley said you come. But I want you to say I want to join because you want to be part of that youth quake. Amen? Ruth, I count you in. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Youth quake. Praise God. We'll do that starting, trying next spring. I want you to watch this. I am revival. I am revival, and at my core, I know God is good, and by nature, He is in a good mood. Salvation creates identity. Through Christ's death and resurrection, I am a new creation. A child of God, 100% righteous. I am responsive to grace. His love is epic. It empowers me to live a supernatural life and do what I couldn't do before. I focus on His presence because He is focused on me. So I walk in His glory for the sake of the world. I am creating healthy family because everything in life flows through relationships. And family houses revival. God's word transforms me. It's a doorway to the feast of knowing Him. God still speaks. I hear his voice and I respond quickly. Jesus empowers supernatural ministry. He has called me to do greater works. So I preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out demons, and raise the dead. His kingdom is advancing because I am co-laboring with a big God and the enemy is defeated. I am free and responsible. I am free from sin and live a responsible life. Honor affirms a value. So I recognize the Christ in others and celebrate his glory in them. I have hope in a glorious bride. I live with an overcoming, victorious mindset. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. I am revival. I am revival. I am revival. That's the core value of this curriculum, a year long, and you have homework, you have book to read. I'm sorry guys, school. But you know me, I, w I won't make it boring, because it's not I make it boring or not. It's a school of supernatural. Amen? Amen. That's a Christmas story too. So, if this God put this in your heart, and you say, I'm not here locally, you can talk to me. What you can do, you find two friends. You can have that curriculum in your dorm, in your workplace, and then we can do this thing online. And we'll have a coaching team. These are Henry, myself, Paul. We will be your coach going through one year of supernatural ministry around you. So pray for this and pray for me. I really think this really, I didn't plan this, but God put this in our heart, in our team, Agape House. So I, the whole team is, is really excited about it. But... We need your prayer and need you to think about this one. Okay, that's Sunday afternoon. Every Sunday, we have semesters, and then every course, every lesson will be online as well. Okay, so we'll do online and on site, folks. All right, final. That's today's message. Long, but.
At the same time, final thing, number four, the Jewish people had given birth to the scriptures and had spread the hope of a coming Redeemer King, as Messiah. The stage was perfectly set for Christ to be born and to rescue a lost world with the Father's love. And that's a Messiah, that's, that's, that's Hebrew word. So the number four was in the religious mountain, Jewish people already paved the way for Christ's coming. They already preach everywhere and say, Messiah is coming. A king is to come. And how about that today? Um, can you read this together? Um, Unto um, us a child is born. Um, Unto um, us a son is given. And let's continue reading. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his children. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And that's who this Christ Christmas child is. His name is Jesus. But that's his name. He's not just a child. He's also the Everlasting Father. He's also Mighty God. He's a Wonderful Counselor. That's the Holy Spirit. Three in one. The Tri God, the Trinity God, and the Prince of Peace. And, and that's why the angel said to his mother, Mary, and said, Fear not. Fear not, Mary, the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit will, be, will come upon you. The power of the highest shall overshadow thee. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And I want to preach to you. I'm going to share with you, but not the way I want you to just say, Hey, Pastor, is preach to me. No. I want to share my heart with you for 2018. This is a message. For myself and, and and I know some of the young people you don't know where you are going in your career but I'm calling you come back to the Christmas supernatural Christmas gift every day I want you to experience something you never experienced before in 2018 so let's go over this one more time fear not the angel said to Zechariah prepare and remember this one our young men and women will be the pride and joy. Amen? Mm -hmm. And many people will be glad that you and I were born. And I want to say, the angel said to the shepherd, the simple-minded people, young people, fear not, the Savior was born for you and me. The, the youth quake is coming. And the young people, old people, we try to find out the truth. That's Jesus Christ himself. And angel said to Joseph as well, say, hey, what's conceived in the church is from the Holy Ghost. No one can take that away. Fear not. Amen? And then the angels say to Mary, do not be afraid. And how do we respond to this? The Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let's try to read that together. I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, may your word to me be fulfilled. The angel left her. So, um, Hey, makes the miracles of Christmas real in your life from today. Amen? Amen. So we are going to close. Um, we're going to sing a simple song together. Um, um, we have, it's Christmas, I have to sing this one. <laughs> um, I want you to sit where you are. Uh, I'm going to go to the piano. But I want to do one thing when we sing this. Um... I want you and I start to feel the presence of the Lord. Um, and I don't want you to just sit there. If, if the Holy Spirit puts something in your heart, um, um, let me try to do this. Um, I want to open this area, this semicircle here. I'm going to pull this chair up. Um, if you really feel this message is something that God speaks to your heart, and you have fear in your heart, you don't know what's going on, or, or you don't know is this a sad time for you, and you don't know you people, many people will be glad you were born, all that, and you want to be part of earthquake, or you are the mother of certain ministry, you are the God gave birth something in you, you are pregnant with a vision in you, you don't know how to deal with it, I want you to come forward and sit here, I want to sing this together, I want you to come to this child, his name is Counselor, Wonderful Counselor. His name is Everlasting Father. 
His name is <laughs> you, you can count him. I want you to come here to sit down. Just like what happened 2,000 years ago. One night, shepherd came. The wise man came. The animal came. <laughs> and, and, and Joseph. And, and all this Mary. I want to come sit down. And, and, and some of the ministry team. We don't have a ministry team today. Everybody, come on. Let's, let's be the ministry. So you want to sit down here, and we may lay hands on you, we may not. We don't know, but I want you to come here. If you want, you can come forward, sit down here, and say, Lord, this is my silent night, <laughs> my holy night. And I want to come to you, and just in today, 